Shall I begin? <laughs> okay, I, I want to thank you all for this opportunity. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> My presentation is about detection of waves direction with the cosine function using Python. You might understand nothing from here, but I'll explain for you what does that mean. Uh, this is the object plan on outlines, which are not necessary to talk about. The first thing that you need to know, it's studied in high school, which is the, uh, let's say, trigonometry. Okay? Now, the only function that we're going to use here is cosine function. As we know that cosine is uh, the adjacent over hat of juice. That's what cosine is. Everyone knows, and you have studied it in high school. Uh, now, since cosine of any angle is equal to the uh, adjacent over hat hypotenuse, if you want to find out the uh, angle, we can uh, like modify the equation a little bit to, to this one. As you see, the cosine inverse of the adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to need this equation, especially this, uh, this shape, let's say, in order to, to do our work, uh, in order to use it to determine wave's direction. Now, uh, let's, let's imagine that we have two detectors. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of de detectors we use because it, it depends on the type of the wave. So different waves need different <laughs> detectors. They're waiting on me. <laughs> okay, different, since different waves need different detectors, that's what we, we're gonna use. <laughs> Okay, we're going to use, let's say, we, we want, if we want to find the direction of any, any type of wave, let's say sound. Now, uh, these two detectors should be microphones, right? If you have two microphones and a sound wave comes from this direction, this direction, there will be a time difference between the two detectors. First time, this one will detect, and the second time, it takes a, a little bit time, there, there will be a time difference between these first and second to detect. Now, if you just multiply the velocity of the sound wave by the time difference, we will have this, this distance. Now, since we have this distance, which is the hypotenuse, and this one will be the adjacent. So, what we have here is cosine function, the adjacent over hypotenuse. So, we can use the, this formula, which is cosine inverse, the velocity of the wave multiplied by the time difference will be this distance, over the distance between the two detectors, we can determine the angle of this wave using the, this simple uh, uh, formula, let's say. And uh, I also I also use the uh, Python program in order to calculate the, the, the direction and the distance as well. Now, uh, this is the code for the uh, Python. That, that, that if you want to, uh, you, what you need is just input the time differences into the Python program, into the, this, let's say, a, a simple application, and it will calculate the direction for you by itself. For example, this is the first detector, and this one is the second one. Uh, since the first detector detects this, the sound, the wave, earlier than the second one, there's a time delay, which is this amount, this tiny time delay. So the second one uh, has uh, detected the sound later than the, the first one. When you calculate it, when you use the, the cosine function, what you get is that it will calculate for you and tell you that the sound comes from the, the left direction. Since the first one detected first, that's why it tells you that the, the sound comes from the uh, left direction. And it will also uh, calculate for you the angle, the angle of the, uh, let's say, the sound or any type of wave. And uh, if the sound came from the right direction as well, if the sound was in front of you, the sound was in front of you, let's say, both of the uh, detectors will, will detect the wave and will sense it at the same time. That's why what, what it will show is that the sound comes directly in front of you. But there, but there is one issue here. Since we have a symmetry between back and forth, up and down, that's why you cannot only use two detectors. Otherwise, you cannot distinguish whether the sound comes in front of you or uh, from back. That's why. We needed to, to make uh, to like put at least three detectors in order to be able to determine the center line. In order to determine the vertical, you have to add another one. That's why 
I had to like make this model, this simple model, uh, which are four detectors in order to determine the, the sound in the, any direction. And this, these were, were the codes that I needed to write, it, write all of them down because it compares between each one of the detectors and the time difference between them, the distance between each detector, in order to determine the uh, any wave direction in 3D world. Now the application of uh, this thing. Since most of the most of it, the waves spread out in a spherical shape, let's say light spreads out in a spherical shape, sound wave, uh, gravitational wave, seismic waves, all of them. That's why uh, we can generalize this formula to and use it for all sorts of waves. What you need is just the time difference between two detectors and the speed of the wave. Whether it's a seismic wave, sound wave, any type of wave, since all of them spread out in a spherical shape, they yeah, spread out equally. So no matter, it doesn't matter whether you're on this side or this side, you'll still be able to determine the uh, direction. Uh, this is one of the application for for sound. Uh, as we know that when we hear something, we can like uh, precisely determine the direction using our ears, just our ears. Uh, because we have two ears, and the, the time difference between this ear and this ear, in, in your mind, in your brain, will be processed. So your brain will determine the direction of, of any sound by the time difference between these two ears. That's how it works. So, uh, also we have these ridges, ridges of your ear. These uh, also have a crucial role in order to determine the any sound of any uh, like uh, the direction of any type of sound, so these things were crucial. I I believe uh, I thought a lot about this one until I I, I worked and, and then I found out what are the role of these different bridges. Uh, anyway, let's say let's say there is uh, a sniper. Okay, you are in you are a soldier, you military or anything. And a sniper shoots uh, shoots bullets at you. If you have uh, a device like this with four detectors, this device, the, the horizontal one, will determine for you the, the angle horizontally, and the, let's say that the vertical one will, will determine the uh, angle vertically. So let's say the, the horizontal one will determine this direction and the vertical this direction, and then the camera will rotate based on the angle. So uh, this device will tell you precisely the, the location of the, the sniper. Or the, the, the enemy. Uh, one of your soldiers should be sacrificed to at least one of them. Right. Uh, I believe, I, I just claim that I can use this, uh, this generalized formula for gravitational waves as well. If you have like three uh, LIGO detectors, gravitational wave detector in three parts of the world, we can determine their direction, the direction of any sort of uh, gravitational wave as well. And this formula can be used for determining the, their distance, the distance of the uh, gravitational wave, just by calculating the intensity and the power of the wave, no matter where, what type of wave is it, even sound waves, seismic waves as well. That means all waves. And uh, for seismic waves, you can use it as well. If you put four detectors for seismic waves, and the, if you input the velocity of seismic wave, which is, I think, three kilometers in a second, something like this, with the time difference between each, each uh, detector, you can determine the direction of the, or the position where, where the, this uh, earthquake occurred, yes. You can even use it for this one as well. And uh, I think, that's all. These are the references and thank you for your attention.